I'm very transparent about my randomness. <laughs> it's just easier that way. Right, so this evening we've got a couple of things to cover. Um, and focusing on opinion writing in particular, uh, briefly just mentioning fake news, which I know that you guys actually are comfortable with already because a lot of you brought it up in your essays for me for your part. And then starting to look at the POE, because I know a lot of you have been asking questions and everything, and I've just wanted a bit of feedback and a bit of information. So um, I said, let me rather cover it so that it's recorded and that, you know, everyone's getting the same info. And then our next collab, which will be our last one, will be our NSS. Okay, so it means that we're covering it more than once. Okay, so mm -hmm. I just want to um, just hold on a second. So the first thing that I just want to speak about is our opinion writing. Now, I want to pay this, uh, specific attention to this because a lot of students like doing opinion writing for their POE. And I understand it's, you know, it's the first time having a bit of uh, leeway in terms of giving uh, an opinion, having a voice, and actually, you know, putting information out that isn't just, you know, your stereotypical academic essay. But opinion writing is actually one of the hardest types of writing, but can be really rewarding. Now, the reason why it is so difficult is that you are giving opinion, but you're giving opinion with balance. Okay, so we have certain guidelines that we can follow when it comes to opinion writing to make sure that when we're giving opinion, it is based on accurate, truthful information. Okay, so I'm actually going to go somewhere else where you don't hear all these babies talking. So when you are working with your opinion writing, it is so important to understand that it's not a place for you to just rant and rave, um, attack a, uh, the opposite side to what you believe. It's all about balance. It's all about making sure that you are putting out information that is truthful, researched, and that your your perspective is not just something you've sucked out your thumb. It's actually based on, you know, good research and understanding and so that I can see that you're not just basically writing an assignment and just putting out your stuff and thinking, oh, well, I don't need to um, really research, which is not the case. Opinion writing takes so much more research. So if you have a look at the, when it's say, looking at these guidelines, the first thing is avoid headlines that are questions. So when you're writing your headline, just make sure that I can clearly see what your opinion is. Um, I can see your perspective from the start. Um, and that, you know, that is the perspective you're going forward with throughout your assignment. All right. And now with opinion writing, you've got to start strong. So you've got to start with the strong first line. But guys, what's so, so important, I cannot stress this enough. You don't say, in my opinion, or I think, or I feel. Sure, Lou. So let's say that you are, okay, you guys give me a topic, any topic at all. Mm. It isn't just for those who have English module creative writing in terms of freedom. Yes, Stefan, that's a very good way of looking at looking at it. Okay, gender-based violence. Okay, so let's say you are writing from the perspective that you are against gender-based violence. So your headline could be something of, along the lines of. Um, um, putting an end to gender-based violence or um, gender-based violence needs to stop, all right? So from that headline, a person can deduce that it's a story based on gender-based violence and that your perspective is that you are anti it. Okay, cool, all right. So you start off strong. And I know there's, you know, people think they're going to be clever and nuanced and go and, you know, try and write in a way that makes us think and what have you. But at this stage, opinion writing is not about that. It is about getting people to see your side. 
So you are meant to be there to, that's why it says open with a strong first line. You're meant to be there to give a perspective, show your point of view, but done in a clever way. That is um, getting people to open up to what you have to say. So it says there you aren't just there to help. So the idea here is that when you're working within journalism, you, your, your job is to research. You have the time to find out different perspectives and um, you know draw on different points of views and what have you. You aren't there just to you know give suggestions to the audience. Your job is to try and get them to see what you are saying and agree with your perspective. But again, no, I think, I feel, you should, anything like that. How you are going to sway people is through good research and through strong um, factual pieces of information. Share fully the academic research information and write in a formal tone. Um, okay, so yes and no, Leah. So you do have this research like you would for academics, but it's not a formal tone. So some of the best opinion pieces are conversational in their approach because a lot of people will uh, turn their noses up when they are being presented with things in a very formal manner. So what they will do is they want to see you actually um, having a conversation with them, giving your perspective, um, trying to you know build their knowledge base based on what you have researched. So you don't want it to be as formal as, say, your hard news stories would be, but you don't want it as conversational as a magazine feature. So you're looking towards more your newspaper feature. So formal, but with a little bit more relaxed. Okay, so for example, with the conversation part, let's say, okay, let's keep this idea of the gender-based violence. So if you were writing... Um, a piece on gender-based violence being anti it, the conversation would be not you like literally saying, so what do you guys think of this? And I think this and I, it's more that you are talking or writing, should I say, in a way in which you would communicate with your lecturers, um, your peers. So not your peers in terms of like what you would send to someone in a WhatsApp, but how you would converse about a topic that is more hard hitting, um, and more in depth. So it's that they're wanting to see that your research is not just you listing fact after fact after fact, but an actual fact, sorry, uh, uh, let's change that because I've used the word fact so many times. Um, but what you are actually showing them is your thought process, your reasoning behind what you believe. So you could go and say, you know, gender-based violence is on the rise, um, and we need to understand that the more we accept it, the more it will continue and the worse things will get. So just as I'm having a conversation with you guys right now, your story, your opinion piece should follow that same kind of tone and structure. Okay, so the idea, evening. So it's basically trying to ensure that you're, you're not being so formal and basically stuck up, that people go, well, you think you're better than me and I'm not gonna read your piece. You want people to feel engaged throughout it. You want them to actually think about what you're saying. And if you're too formal about it, they do see you as being stuck up and high and mighty. But if it's more conversational, then they actually feel almost at ease and that they can take on this information and then they can actually think about whether or not what you have said um, goes with their own viewpoint or goes against it. So if you look at Pen and Peace on Newsroom 4, there is a conversational, hard-hitting, sometimes humorous. Yes, Lou, that's right. So it does depend on what topic you're doing. So something like gender-based violence, you would be more formal. If it's about the fact that the 90s fashion is back and you can't honestly believe how such a thing exists again when everyone used to slate um, the 90s fashion that would be more humorous and more engaging it's still an opinion piece it's still based on this idea of cyclical fashion and you know all that kind of thing it is so terrifying um so what's important here is that you need to know 
what your opinion piece is going to be on to determine what kind of tone you take. My opinion to session experience comes from being part of debate team during my high school years. Um, and much of what you are stating does still. Yes, so Stefan, it is, it's, it's, is a very similar perspective. <laughs> Yeah, 70s, the, the mustard yellows and the browns, not my thing either. So what's also important here, guys, is you can't try and shove thousands of facts down people's throats in a small space of time. So you can't, within like one paragraph, have 20 facts. Because, again, they're just going to get overwhelmed. And when we get over, overwhelmed with media, we literally close the tab. We go, eh, eh, no thanks. Close it off move on thank you so that's why we've got to make sure that you know you put this early stuff the good stuff early on all right and then you build upon that because that good stuff should be the stuff that draws um your reader to the piece makes them go this is actually quite cool i'm i'm liking the story and then your supporting evidence comes through all right so that's why it says keeps par keep paragraphs self-contained short but variable so just think about your different thoughts so each group of thoughts should be put into different paragraphs gives give P your audience or me um, a resting break for our eyes give them a moment to think about what you're saying if you go and you give these full long paragraphs again we as society are in for a quick fix we want that information now not, um, you know, just now, 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 and all our other South Africanisms. We want that information as quickly as possible. We don't want to spend time, um, you know, getting to the point. We want the point, and then if we've got the time, we'll get into the, de the deeper details. Can you ask questions in your piece? For example, so what if we don't make an effort towards ending gender-based violence? Yes, Cassidy, you can propose questions. Um, because that actually is what it comes, especially with the end of your piece, is that um, what you have is what we call the call to action or where we get people to either make change, take steps forward. So you can uh, you can definitely have those questions, but you can't end on a question. You can't um, leave them having to fill in the gaps. So if you have questions posed within your piece or towards the end, you do need to answer them and need to give your educated understanding. Because remember, you're writing as if you are seasoned journalists with, um, you know, the background to support what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, let me just see, Aaliyah, can we use subheadings in the opinion piece? No. Subheadings must not be used because subheadings break up um, opinion pieces. The only piece that you guys can really use subheadings in is your magazine. If you choose to do a magazine piece, um, opinion pieces, you've got to have good flow. Listen, if you think it really works and supports your perspective, then you're welcome to send me a screenshot of that particular section with the subheadings and I'll have a look. Um, but in most instances, it's not a good idea to do that. Okay. So the other thing it says here, it's not just about data. Find the story, context, and data. So again, it's that whole idea of don't just base everything on facts. People want the emotion. They want the depth. They want to see your understanding. Okay. Cool. Um, so bring out the emotions. And like I've said previously with you guys, the emotions come from the quotes and from the people involved within the story. So let's say with gender-based violence, it's not about you as the author, as um, the writer, uh, you know, explaining the, the experience. You find other people to explain the experience and then you, through your research, support that with evidence from this organization and that society and what have you. Okay. So, with all of your pieces, that human element is important. And guys, what also is important, now this is um, something that might surprise some of you, even though you're doing an opinion piece and you are writing a story with your opinion shining through, your views, you still need the other side of the story. You can't only give one side. So let's say if you are, okay, I'm not going to use gender-based violence because there isn't another side to that one, but let's say politics, all right? Maybe you want to do a piece on how the ANC have let us down, okay? Um, load shedding the way it is and all that kind of thing. So 
your, you choose to write a story about that. At the same time, you can't only just slate the A and C and, you know, just say how terrible they are and all the things they're doing wrong. No, 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 no. That's too one sided. An opinion piece is not about um, only showing one perspective. It's about supporting your perspective with the evidence. So you would say, OK, the ANC have sucked when it comes to electricity. They have done steps to improve it by doing this and this and this. But shouldn't these have been things that happened, you know, 10 years ago or what have you? OK. Um, are you meaning with gender based violence, Lou, or with the ANC? Because <laughs> that'll depend on your politics and yada yada. <laughs> So we won't get into a big political debate and I won't give my perspectives on that. But the idea here is that you are making sure that people are understanding your perspective based on your research, not only on your views, but other views, because the worst kind of journalist is someone that only reads up on what they believe. That should never be the case. OK, yes, that OK, I would agree with that, but that's not only the ANC, that's just some of the corrupt politicians and all that kind of thing okay so what we've got to do is make sure that when you guys are writing your pieces that you show that you've got research i mean i've got a i'll give you an example i've got a friend who is anti-vaccination covid just made her go a little bit loopy and she will tell me all the time why the vaccine is bad and why you know covid didn't really happen and oh my brother had covid and he went running and he was fine now yes lucky him all right there's some of us that when we get covered we're man down for like two weeks and yeah it, it's it's nasty and end up hospitalized and have lost family members and what have you but i said okay but where's your research from and she tells me a bunch of fake news sites which of course gets me up in arms and then i said to her but you haven't even researched the other side she goes but i don't believe in the other side so why should i care and I was trying to explain to her that you can have your opinion, but you can't spew your opinion if you have not researched the other side. So, yes, I understand where people are coming from with COVID and, you know, the vaccines and not wanting to do them and all that. I can completely understand. I've researched the other side, but I still will stand by my side of vaccinating. And when I get COVID, I'm out for the count for two weeks at least. So... I lectured last year through COVID, not knowing I had COVID, and it was the worst possible thing that ever existed. I don't wish shit on my worst enemy, but it just shows you that the, your opinion needs to come from research from all sides. Okay, so I cannot stress stress that enough. Okay, yeah, see, Lou, you as well. It's it can hit some people really hard. Now the other thing is, guys, I don't want any fence sitting. I don't want you going, this is my opinion, but I can understand why people say this, but I still think this, but okay, they do have their perspective on that. No, you own your opinion. You stand by what you believe in. What I will say more than anything else, guys, I know this is for academic marks and what have you. I don't care what your opinion is. Now I say that with love in my heart. I don't mean it in a negative way. What I mean is if your opinion is different to mine, I don't mind. I don't care. I care that you are showing me your opinion and you're writing your piece with strength and that you are supporting your opinion no matter what, okay? So the whole idea is that I will mark you based on your writing. I'll mark you based on how evident your perspective is, all right? So that is super, super important. Just own it and don't worry if you think it's going to offend me or not or what have you. It, hopefully, for some of you, it will actually get me thinking. That would be awesome. I'm all for having people, you know, um, getting me to think about things and different perspectives and what have you. So like you were saying earlier, Estefan, start with the hook. Um, start with something that grabs the attention. Aim correctly. Don't deliberately want to offend people. Your aim should be educating. Educating, informing. Rem remember the media entertains, educates, and informs and those who do media studies next semester and those who are currently doing it as well we learn about um media and its function within society so opinion pieces should be there to educate and inform 
your your audience all right everything must be backed up with relevant information or relevant facts okay any statement that you give me so if you say the vaccine causes autism right i want the facts that support that statement all right because if i know those facts are incorrect and there's a lot of topics that i'm well versed in and often if it's a topic that i'm not well versed in i will research while i'm do marking your poes um i also have a husband which has has a very uncanny thing for general knowledge and random facts i thank his adhd for that so i also ask him because he's also a trained journalist like me so you know between us we know quite a bit so with that you also need to make sure you follow all the rules so make sure that you're giving again that opinion but not um saying in my opinion and that kind of thing is it best to start with with all the vital information and elaborate further within the piece um yeah Leah, i would go with the so you don't have to do all five w's and h right at the beginning what i would do is of those maybe find three or four that are critical that are super important and then expand upon them later on but there's got to be something at the beginning that i can sink my teeth into and i go oh this is going to be cool oh this is interesting i haven't thought of it from that way something that does that and then you can then give more um relevant and like spicy i say with air quotes pieces of information that help um you know put it uh give further support and evidence All right sorry i'm just getting kicked out of the room i'm in to go to a quieter place so my child doesn't bug you guys so it's all about finding that balance making sure that there is enough information but not overwhelming like doing the five w's and h straight one after the other and then the last thing with um opinion writing is that like i said we've got to have this call to action so the idea here is that you should never just leave the audience with more questions than answers the aim is that they should look at your piece and understand your perspective see what you're saying and then you get what we have is the call to action we get them so i'm just going to the next slide so you can um see what i'm saying so it's it's you, that you don't just give an argument and not have a final thought or idea you've actually got to get them to either do something with this call to action or propose how things can change so i don't know why it says can change up so why we, there's got to be a solution so and you can choose what approach you want to take whether it be um you giving a perspective that you think works and you know maybe proposing a way that change can happen or you just say that you know as a society we need to stand up against this whatever but the, you have to you've got to start strong and end strong because if you don't do that your opinion piece is going to be weak and um you know i'm going to i'm going to see the flaws remember you don't have to do an opinion piece for the poe i'm going to explain that all to you guys now so if it's something that you're not necessarily comfortable with you are more than welcome to choose um one of the other types of writing but if it's something you want to try and you feel like you can actually um do it well um and you have an opinion on something then do it what i will say is if you don't have a strong opinion on something whether it be vaccinations um animal rights po politics whatever all right if you don't have a strong opinion on something don't talk about it rather leave it and do one of the other things you can't say you don't have opinions on topics it, it have it not being neutral is having an opinion it's that you don't want to voice your views on it but to write a good opinion piece you actually have to um have a strong opinion on something so i know for me if i was doing this it would be on animal testing for beauty products not for um not for uh, medical things, but for beauty, because it's something I have a strong opinion on. It's something that I know that I could write, you know, a thesis on, and uh, I would still be able to write more. So you guys have got to decide for yourself what you feel comfortable with. All right. How do you feel on that, guys?
Of course, that's what I'm here for. All right, let me see. Cassidy, I'd like to get on something. I know we're supposed to have four topics to present in select two of them, right? I mean, we have to interview four individuals. Um, no, you're only going to do two interviews. I'm going to look through the POE with you guys now. That's what I want to do with you lot so that we can have um, some clarity with the POE, just because I know a lot of you are starting to work on the POE. All right. So just the last learning unit, learning unit 10, is based on fake news. Like I said, I already feel quite comfortable with you guys in fake news because of what you showed me um, for your uh, part. Um, it's basically just looking at, you know, the, the whole chapter is looking at how fake news can influence us and the um, prolific nature of fake news. So what I'll do is in our final collab, if there's any questions specifically to do with fake news, I'll go through that question in our NSS. Um, but if there's any specific things uh, that you have need any clarity on, I'll make sure I go through with that with you guys in our NSS. Is everyone good with that? Yeah, exactly. It's not something unusual to you guys. Okay. So it's something, something quite, quite obvious. All right, so let's have a look at this POE. All right, I'll do the whole referencing and rubric and all that with you guys um, in our NSS, just because we've only got half an hour left. So I just want to um, make sure you guys understand the POE and the basics of it. And again, I'll be going through it all in detail in the NSS as well. All right. So for, um, and I always ask if I could interview multiple people for the perspective. So just going back to seeing Cassidy, one of the topics I have is regarding entertainment. I want to ask if I could do, could also interview multiple people for, for their perspective in the music industry. Yes, that's right. All right, let me get to the let me get to the whole interview part and then see if I can give you clarity from there. OK. All right. So you are basically working as a journalist for a fictitious South African publishing house, which is called Groves in Publishing. And sorry, guys, just one second. Sorry, my ducklings were busy eating plastic off the floor. Um, right. So. This publication is for the greater South African population, and they have got many different publications um, because they, they're a publishing house. So they've got many publications under them, and they cover a whole range of genres, um, and they aim for inclusivity for all South Africans. So they look at both global and local content, ensuring that the South African population is constantly kept up to date on all newsworthy matters. Okay, so as a junior journalist, you have got to be able to bring stories, ideas to your editor, as well as be able to write. All right, so it says, please read the instructions carefully. Um, parts of your POE are compulsory, where others you're going to have some choices. Okay, so let's have a look at what you guys are going to be doing. All right, so it says, as a junior journalist at Groves End Publica uh, Publishing, you're expected to be prepared to work at any of the publications which are owned by the publication house to help develop your journalistic skills through the media immersion. All right. So you've got to be able to work in all different fields. All right. So let's have a look. So we're going to skip, just zoom in your side. We're going to look at task 1.1. I just want my line. OK. So it says one of the senior editors at Groves End Publishing has asked you to do some research and brainstorm four possible story ideas. Wow, that is way too thick. Just let me delete that for a second. Okay. And change that to there. Okay. So you're looking at four possible story ideas that could work across the publications. They have asked for two stories that would be suitable for a print newspaper. Okay. So for a print newspaper and two that would work for a magazine. Okay. 
So your four possible story ideas need to fall into at least two of the following journalistic genres. Okay. So business and politics, current affairs, community, travel, sport, entertainment and culture, education, health and science, technology, environment. All right. So you're working on the premise of four story ideas. Um, uh, we'll catch the recording. No problem. Chat soon. So you are going, so you're going to come up with four ideas. All right, so at this stage, we're just dealing with ideas, okay? So let's go to the next page, and let's see what you actually have to do. So what you're going to be doing for me for this question is you're going to list your four ideas, all right? So you're going to, you can this one you can bullet point, so you're going to list the ideas, and then under each idea, what you're going to do for me is give a brief synopsis of what you think each of your stories could be about okay so with this what your stories could be about provide four different sources for each of your story ideas to show your editor your research all right so for this task 1.1 it's basically trying to get you guys to start the brainstorming process so start thinking about kind of ideas that you are thinking about and then we go to the proper planning and brainstorming okay so you're going to come up and you're going to present to me four paragraphs all right so each of the different ideas okay i'm going to get that to that now lou so you are going to give me four bullet points first there will be the story idea then under that story idea, so you're not giving me your proper headline or whatever, it's just the story idea. So um, maybe it could be on, um, okay, I'm staring at ducks at the moment. Um, the trend for people to have, um, ho uh, the uh, trend of homesteading uh, f uh, to raise birds for meat and eggs. Okay, so that's your idea. Then you would give the synopsis so what you think that story could entail okay then under that you're going to give four different sources so what that means is four websites um four yeah basically four websites where or four news articles or four websites or anything where you think you would get information from and you're going to just put the link to each of those you don't need to properly in text referencing them nothing like that you're just going to give me the links to four different sites of where you could find information that supports your story idea so it's basically showing me that you would need that there is research present that you can do to actually create the story does that make sense can they be under two different genres provided or okay so you choose any of those genres you don't have to do two under one and you can do four different genres or you can do three different genres and two under one and the other two under two others so but the minimum of number of genres you can choose is two so if there's two areas that you feel really strongly about you can do two stories for one two stories for another or you can choose four different ones or three different and so on okay so how short or long must it be? Yolandi, not too long. I really just want a short paragraph to see where your thought process is going and why you thought that was a good idea for a story. So not too, not too long. So the idea here is that I should be able to, because uh, the thing is, you know, it's only, how many marks is it? I've just gone blank. It's only nine marks. So, you know, you can I can only give you so many marks. Yeah, as long as it's four story ideas. And as long as I can see that you've thought about it, that you haven't just chucked four things down. Yeah. Exactly, Amos. It's a, just a brief. So you're probably looking at about, what, four or five sentences? Somewhere around there. The reason why that it is this way this year is because 
what the students always used to say um, was that they had they spent all this time coming up with all these ideas and then no marks were allocated to it. So this way you are actually getting marks for your thought process. So it's not just focusing on the written stories at the end because you put so much into the build up. Okay. I'm glad I'm glad you think so. Let's see if it works. We're going to try it out for this year and see if it works. Okay. So not that you're the guinea pigs. <laughs> um, so almost the four bullet points are the four ideas. So one bullet point with the story idea and then the synopsis and then your four sources. Next bullet point. You don't have to do it as bullet points. I'm just saying you can. You don't have to. Okay, so it was just if you want to break it so that you can clearly demarcate the diff four different ones, that's fine. You're welcome to do that. Okay, so any other questions before I move on to task 1.2? Let's have a look at 1.2. Yes, sorry, that sounded wrong for something. Okay. So it says here, your editors approved your four story ideas, but has directed you to choose two of your story ideas. So yes, it does mean two of them become redundant. That's journalism. Okay. <laughs> I'm friends with Brenda, so that's probably where it comes from. <laughs> All my years of working with Brenda. Okay. <laughs> okay, so no, you don't have to do them in Excel. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so um, <laughs> so it says, you're going to brainstorm your two chosen stories further and in more detail and produce one mind map per story. Guys, you can make this mind map in, Power, in PowerPoint, in Word, in Canva, um, any software. You can make these mind maps. I just want to see your thought process going from this in, uh, initial idea, which you've got from 1.1 and grow it. Okay. Um, and the idea here is that I need to see at least five different story angles based on your original thought. So it's that we often will have a thought and we go, cool, this is what my story is going to be, but then you need to spend time developing it and building upon it because Often our first initial story ideas are too um, broad. And when we mind map them, we actually think about the different angles and how we're able to choose one particular angle, which then works for your story. So two mind maps in total with five different story angles on each of them. And a yes, 100%. Okay. So of those five, you will, um, it says, write down your two final story angles. So five angles each, okay? So of, of one of those five should be your final story angle, okay? So, e so by the end of this question, you should have two final story angles, one for each story that you're going to be writing, okay? So those will be the angles that the main writing is done. Sure, Sam. So let's say we do gender-based violence. Okay. So, okay, there we go. <laughs> Already on it, Cassidy. So let's say with gender-based violence, right. Of that, three different angles could be um, gender-based violence with men, with women, with people that are LGBTQI plus community. All right. Then if we took the men one further, we can talk about um, initiation. We can talk about uh, how men are often, uh, gender-based violence against men is often overshadowed. Those are two different angles. With women, we can have um, children, teenagers. We could have an angle on women and um, how gender-based violence within the family and how, you know, we expect our family to protect ourselves. Okay. Then with LGBTQI, we can then go on to, so some angles that stem from that would be how um, P 
people are um, attacked based on the uh, sexual orientation about how people don't necessarily see those who are non-binary as you know having any gender-based violence because they don't acknowledge their gender um yes black lesbian woman 100 percent um because that's actually a big factor so you know you could talk about gender-based violence and how uh, cultural culturally within south africa so if you're part of the lgbtqi community which culturally is you know often looked down upon in a lot of our african cultures so then you talk about how that can lead to um, gender-based violence um, it could lead to um, discussions around you know beating the gay away all that kind of thing um, gender-based hate crimes as well researched in south africa the gender-based violence against black lesbian women is on the rise and is recognized as an insidious attempt to force a change in lesbian women's sexual orientation by being raped assaulted and victimized yep 100 percent that's a very good example, Lou. It's actually one of my third years is doing part of her POE on that topic. So you can see it's that your initial story is gender-based violence. So that would be your task 1.1 would be gender-based violence. Okay. And then your idea is that you'd write a story on gender-based violence and it's uh, prominence within South Africa. Then if you do your mind maps it's how you would then build and how you would spread out and look at the different angles that you could take within the one larger topic you could do something on health and science technology for example new research or a new technology that is revolutionized the medical field would be an informative piece how would you be able to make it different angles for that okay let's use ozempic for an example so if any of you know the um uh, ozempic drug it has been designed for people with type 2 diabetes, but a lot of people are taking it for weight loss because it's showing significant impact in terms of weight loss and people are having really amazing results, even if they aren't diabetic. But a lot of people that are taking it that are diabetic, um, they it was because of weight issues and their weight has now drastically come down. So now if it's kind of revolutionizing the um, weight loss industry as well as the medical industry because it's a very different drug and how it works so you could use that for example so maybe your initial thought your initial story would be um uh medical developments uh within uh, on a global scale then your one angle could be ozempic and what that how that drug is being taken for um weight loss then maybe you do have one that deals with um uh new targeted cancer treatments and how they are able to draw stem cells to fight and attack cancer cells in a particular way um so then you start looking at the different drugs that are on on the market then you look at maybe again going back to the zempic one which just came to mind is the abuse of medicines for alternative um reasonings so for example there's a shortage of ozempic because of people using it for weight loss rather than diabetes so um those that are having di that have diabetes or have issues so this is happening to a friend of mine at the moment she can't always get her ozempic on time because uh she is diabetic and part of it is her weight and she needs to take ozempic but our pharmacies in my area only get a small supply and they run out and so it's whoever's on the list will get for that day so it's things like that okay yeah um so if you go to um it, it, so you've got to start more general yes chantal exactly it went out of stock worldwide because celebrities were saying this is how they were losing weight and so on and so forth so that's something you could look into so when you're doing your task 1.1 don't be too specific think about um, how you would build from it. So make sure you are a little bit more general for 1.1, and then in 1.2, you guys will go into more specific topics. Does that make sense for you guys? Sorry, I just see, so would your final angle be every five angles? No, 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 Almas. So of the five angles, at least that you find, 
one of those will be your final story. So the idea is that we always start general and then we, we simplify to more specific. So it should be that one of those angles that you've highlighted should result in a story that is researchable and applicable. Okay. Yes, exactly. That's what an angle is. It's the, the direction you want to take it. Okay. Leah, send me, um, just WhatsApp me a screenshot of your mind map before you change it. And let me just see. Because expanding on the different angles and stuff and what you're thinking, it might, it might be a smaller fix than you think. So I don't want you to go and change it all when I can give you a little bit more direction with that. Okay. Yeah. So it's the, the first two are the planning process. Okay. So we've got the planning process. Now, let me, I want to just look at the conducting the interviews and then I just want to speak briefly to um, just how the structure of the writing comes. Okay. In terms of the, the options. So for the interview, so now that you've chosen your story ideas, okay, you've got to interview people. Yes, I know, big, scary world out there, but you have got to conduct two interviews. These two interviews can um, work for either one of the stories, or you can do one interview for one story, one interview for the other. It doesn't matter as long as you conduct two interviews that can be used in at least one of your stories. Does that make sense, everyone? Oh, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Sorry, I changed it. And I've just read the sentence that I changed it. Sorry, I changed it last minute and I completely forgot. It's one interview per story. Sorry, my bad. So you are going to do one story per one interview per story. Okay. Sorry, I got you all excited there for a moment. Guys, it just needs to be someone that can have a view or a say or something. Okay, so sorry, my bad. The reason why I had to change it was that the some some people were coming up with the most bizarre things for their second stories because they didn't have a grounded interview in it. So that is why. Okay, so you have to have one interview, one face to face interview per story. Okay, I have a doctor, one is an MD and one a plastic surgeon. Awesome, Lou. That's great. Do we need to put in views details? Yes. So you do need to do it. You also do need to put it through SafeAssign because we have had people fake entire interviews as well as copy and paste entire interviews from the internet. So you do need those details. I will only use them if I think your interview is a suspect and I need to follow up. But I think that's happened twice in all the years. Ah, Yolandi, that is the nice loophole there. It can be can be on Zoom or FaceTime or one of those, um, because as long as you are face to face with the person, you're good. No, you can get them both. You've got to do at least two interviews. You've got to do two interviews, but you're gonna. But if you've got more than one interview per story, that's fine. Is herbs meaning urbanol? The, the pill that gets us through everything. <laughs> Nectar is included. <laughs> uh, it's like when I've when I've got friends around me, I'm like, have you have to, have you had an urbanol today? <laughs> You can see when they've had a bit rough day. Okay, so listen, if you want to add an extra interview, please do. That is great. I'm not going to complain. It's going to just add to your story. Okay, our new research that my uncle is doing on a microchip that makes paralyzed people walk, but he lives in America. That's amazing. Luca, um, yeah, I would, what I would do is I would do it over Zoom. 
or I say Zoom because you can record it, but you can FaceTime as well. Because the thing is, you need to do, so you've got to produce a um, transcript of the interview. And yes, an email contact is more than enough. That is absolutely incredible. So this is the thing, guys. We've got these. We've got the technology. As long as it's not an email or a phone conversation, as long as you can physically see the person, you're good to go. So just you know, try and think about what you're doing. Just when you're doing it, just remember it's eight to ten questions. Um, make sure you ask enough. Ask. Make sure you have enough of open-ended questions that they can give you stuff you can quote. For the, do we need to upload the transcripts when we type? Um, so you're going to type them out in Word for me. So you're going to type, so you're going to have question, answer, question, answer. So what I'm going to be doing is looking at your balance of open and closed ended questions. I'm going to look at the type of questions you asked, and I'm going to see what kind of responses that were, that you get from the questions you ask. Because at the end of the day, there is no point doing an interview where the person says yes, no, yes, no, um, maybe because you can't quote them. And remember, we need the quotes. Yeah, it is easier. And third year for those that do JERN in, do JERN 2 that aren't doing psych, um, they have to put the video on their digital POEs. So they actually have to show proof of the interview being conducted by themselves. So I don't know if any of you are doing that or anyone not doing psych, should I say? All right. So you've got to document it. It's got to be an eight to 10 minute interview and you've got to give me a transcript. Okay. So like I said, question, answer, question, answer, and then you're good to go. All right. So each, each interview is worth 10 marks. So the marks are for the transcript. So I see what has been written. And then the quotes, I've got to then, in your actual written stories, I've actually got to see that you've used those interviews. Yeah. Yes, exactly, Yolandi, 100%. Okay. Everyone okay so far with the interviews part? Sorry, guys, we'll probably go five minutes over. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so yikes. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, Elmas. It's actually really quick. It's pretty much the same structure. You just got to video record it and upload that. But it's quite nice doing a digital portfolio. It's quite fun. Okay. All right. So just to speak to you guys about the writing for journalism part. Okay. So now, awesome. No, I promise we have lots of fun in June. In June too. And NCTE, which you'll do with me as well. Okay. So for your for the writing part. Okay. So now you've chosen your two topics. You're gonna you've chosen your angles. Now there are four different options that you can now turn those stories, uh, turn those ideas into stories. You can choose to write a hard new news piece or a newspaper feature or a magazine feature or an opinion piece. So you choose four, uh, choose two out of the four. Okay. So each piece is worth 20 marks. So you've got to decide with those topics that you've chosen, will that topic suit a hard news story, a newspaper feature, a magazine feature, or an opinion piece? You choose. So you're only having to write two journalistic pieces of writing. Okay. So it's nice and simple to the point. So you're not, you know, if you really don't connect with opinion writing, you can leave it out. If you don't like the idea of writing for a magazine, you can leave it out, but you do have to choose two out of the four. All right. Does that make sense to you guys? Has this helped a bit? 
and no references. Okay, yes. So in the pieces, there is no in-text referencing. Okay. No, you can't do two of the same, Cassie. You've got to choose two different pieces. Okay. So two topics need to be covered in two different ways. Yes. So no in-text referencing, but every source of information goes into your reference list at the end. When you are referring to um, your interview in your story, you don't say in an interview conducted with or in an interview I did with so-and-so. You would say, um, Anwen Middleton, um, an expert in raising ducks, says that, and then the quote, all right? Or um, Anwen Middleton, uh, a new homesteader, explained that her best way of attending to this was and then the quote and if you need if you're finding information like from a specific organization so let's say it's the world health organization you'd say as the world health organization explains and then you would give the direct quote guys direct quote as much as you can more than paraphrasing in your journalistic pieces okay should look like alia just go on um onto news 24 and there are Hundreds of them. There are so many there. It's just your longer pieces, your longer news new stories. They have a whole section on features that you can go draw from. Okay. So what is important here, guys, is that even though you're not, you know, referencing like in-text referencing, you still reference the people who have got the real um <laughs> so, in your reference list, there is actually in the um, VC referencing guide, there is actually an interview uh, reference. So, you can go there. And no, I don't eat my ducks, I only eat my eggs, or their eggs, should I say. <laughs> so, yes, there is actually in your referencing guide how to do an interview. So, you just got to follow that. And just make sure that you d use direct quotes you can paraphrase some of the stuff but direct quotes have got more impact and you acknowledge the places where that information comes from so the world health organization pizza whoever it is you acknowledge them but it's not in text referencing no i can't i, the, the, I can't um eat my my babies i will happily eat the eggs I've had my ducks in a row once and I have a photo of it as proof. <laughs> Never again. The mom did have her ducks in a row this week, though. I was very jealous of her. Okay. I've told you guys I'm very transparent, transparent about my lunacy. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, the ducks are my herbies. I just sit and watch them rather than taking meds. No other questions for now. Okay. Okay, guys. Then that's it for tonight.